You mentioned the war on terror. Any, any further thoughts there? Anything you want to amplify regarding the war on terror? Yeah, in terms of the global war on terror, I, I don't want anyone to think that that I'm soft on terror, or I don't feel like we need a, a strong approach. But we need an intelligent approach, and we don't have that right now. What we've effectively done in Iraq is we've said, we're going to fight the war on terror in Iraq against Al-Qaeda, which wasn't there when we got there. Um, you know, the, the Al-Qaeda is a Sunni organization, and, uh, and the Hussein regime was a um, Shia organization, and uh, he certainly wasn't going to tolerate <laughs> a, uh, a, a Sunni terrorist organization operating within Iraq. Nobody even claims that. So, so the reason that there is Al-Qaeda in Iraq for us to fight is because we are in Iraq. So we showed up, and they came along. And there are other fringe organizations, and there's a lot of threats from, from elsewhere. So, so we have people to fight there because we're there. You know, we, we've shown up there, and essentially, we're continuing the, the terrorist activities in Iraq and assuming that that's where all the terrorists are. You know, we're, we're making this assumption that if we sit in Iraq, that they'll all come to us, and they'll fight us there, and we'll have this nice, you know, symmetric battle, and, and that's not the reality. And uh, when you talk to experts in this area, they, they'll tell you it's not the reality, that this is an asymmetric threat, and it's global. So we're spending all of our resources in one area. We're ignoring Afghanistan to a large degree. Uh, we're certainly under-resourcing our efforts in Afghanistan, where there actually are terrorists that uh, were there before we got there. Uh, there are a lot of other locations in the world where there are terrorist cells, there are al-Qaeda cells, there are other activities going on, but we can't address those. We don't have the resources to properly address those. So what our real approach needs to be is we need to take a step back. We need to bring our troops back home, and we need to reassess, as we're progressing, our approach to fighting global terrorism. Because the technologies we use during the Cold War, our tank divisions, our bombers, are not particularly well suited for addressing a terrorist threat. So we need to advance our research and excuse me, research and development in technologies that are specifically suited for addressing global terrorism and an asymmetric threat. Uh, that's one thing that we need to advance and the Department of Defense needs to be tasked with and oriented towards. And, and they can do that. You know, they, have, they certainly have uh, wonderful scientists and wonderful personnel there. So if, if you task them appropriately, that will get done. Uh, and then while we're doing that, we need to be looking around the world, developing our intelligence network better. Uh, we have, that, that's actually something that has begun under the Bush administration. I think, they, I think the intelligence community recognized the need to improve our intelligence and has expanded that to some degree. Expanding that greater would be a, a, you know, an even nicer benefit so that we can actually have a global understanding of terrorist activities and not rely specifically on electronics intelligence or, or um, um, you know, other passive intelligence, but, but also extend our, our human intelligence capacity as well in that area. So basically expand this global network so that we can address and head off terrorism. But that is, that is fighting a symptom. Anytime that you're specifically attacking terrorist cells, you are addressing a symptom of a disease and it has nothing to do with a cure. You know, it's bringing the fever down. It's taking Tylenol if you're sick. It's not going to cure you but it'll make you feel better and it'll, it'll reduce the symptoms. So it's something we have to do and we have to concentrate on it, otherwise we'll lose American lives. But we, we can't just do that. We have to look at ways, and it'll all be diplomatic, we have to look at diplomatic uh, approaches to combating the creation of terrorist organizations, to the production of fanatics and people who are anti-American or anti-US or anti-West or, or whatever uh, approaches they're coming up with, and, and look at ways to mitigate that. So increasing our funding for assistance and development in areas that we tend to see, uh, you know, this fanatic approach to uh, terrorist activities is something that we have to look for. And, and I think that's something where we're, we're definitely lacking. And the State Department is, is wonderful while I was there. I had nothing but the greatest respect to the people. But they certainly weren't funded as well as they, they could be. And we always saw funding cuts. And, and I know that um, you know my, 
the, the offices I was in previously, a lot of them have been cut. Everything is getting sent to Iraq. Um, all the Foreign Service officers have to go spend time in Iraq. The Iraqi embassy is, is this vast creation that is taking a, an incredible amount of resources away from the State Department. And they'd be better spent, um, you know, developing another.